Welcome to Dark Celtic <laughs> History. <laughs> He was an heir to one of Scotland's noblest titles, but is said to have been locked away in a secret chamber in the family castle, his existence denied after being born seriously deformed. Thomas Lyon Bowes quite cruelly became known as the Monster of Glamis. With the tragic birth of his heir feeding the imagination of Victorian storytellers, local gossips, and likely even giddy aristocrats keen to entertain their guests after dinner. What is known is that Thomas was born on October 21st, 1821 at Glamis Castle in Angus, with the official record stating the baby boy died on that, same, that very same day. His parents were Thomas, Lord Glamis, son of the 11th Earl of Strathmore, and Charlotte Lyon Bowes. The couple were the great-great-grandparents of the Queen Mother, who was also born at Glamis, as was her daughter, Princess, Princess Margaret. Rumors started circulating in villages around Glamis Castle immediately about the supposed death of young Thomas, which were likely fueled by reports from the midwife that Thomas had survived the birth. An apparent lack of, of a gravestone for the boy probably supported the suspicions surrounding his fate. Over time, the story grew, though. Allegedly, a workman who encountered Thomas in a passageway close to the chapel was offered money by the Earl to immigrate to Australia and never tell a soul of what he had seen. That workman passed down what he knows to, the, to his son, and then it was passed to his grandson. This is how we come to know of the monster of Glam's Castle today. Dispelling all myth and rumor and telling the cold hard facts of incest, murder, conspiracy, and revenge. Added proof of the tale is how the estate manager refused to step foot in the castle after being told about the purpose of the secret chamber. Sir Walter Scott, famous writer, wrote of an eerie night that he spent at Glamis in which he referred to the secret chamber. Although he mentioned no monster in that article, in 1830, a later version of his story featuring the monster appeared in the New York Times in 1864. In 1908, an edition of Notes and Queries, published by Oxford University Press, goes into great detail about the mystery of Glamis, with the writer claiming that he had known the story for 60 years. The writer claimed to have spoken to the workmen in Australia, and had certain facts so close to the truth that it was no surprise when he came up. No trace was ever found of him. It said the story was that in the Glamis, the castle of Glamis, the celebrated old castle of the Earls of Strathmore, is a secret chamber. In this chamber is confined a monster, who is the rightful heir to the title and property, but who is so unpresentable, so disfigured, that it is necessary to keep him out of sight and out of possession of everything he is entitled to. The secret is supposed to be known to only three persons, the Earl of Strathmore, his heir, and the manager of the estate. Depictions of the mysterious Earl also emerged in time. Uh, Jason Hope Simpson, in her book, Who Knows, suggested that the boy may have suffered a genetic defect given that his ch the child's parents were actually cousins first removed. The historian Mike Dash, who writes for the Charles Fort Institute, also wrote of a second secret of the Glamis legend that emerged during the 19th century. Far from being home to an unwanted heir, the secret chamber contained the remains of members of the rival Ogilvy clan, who came from lands at nearby Kirnmere, unable to admit that he may have been the cause of his son's deformity and mutation, Lord Thomas Glamis filled his son's head with tales of rival clan Ogilvy and the magical vengeance spells the witches of that clan had probably cursed upon him for the wrongdoing. 
by our detached forefathers who clashed with their clan from time to time. Then one day, after members of the actual rival Ogilvy clan had sought refuge at Glamis during a storm, they were allowed in the property, given hospitality as it always should be given in the highlands, and shown into the chamber, though, where they were barricaded in and starved. Thomas Lyon Bowes, the monster of Glamis, was able to get the revenge he had dreamed of after years of psychological torture by his father. He ripped them to shreds and stacked their bodies to rot. He would not let anyone near them, even the new bodies. He considered their bones his conquest, his trophy. The story in Mike Dash wrote that their skeletons still scattered on the floor was a secret that the Lyons family was so anxious to conceal as to kill to do it. While the true mystery of Castle Glamis remains unexplained, it does appear true that the castle was burdened with a particularly dark secret, one that grew and got increasingly uncomfortable, though. Thomas Lyon Bowes, the monster of Glamis, became bored with his secret chamber after a few years, and when he became strong enough, he vanished. He was given a meal one evening, and the next morning, when servants went to collect the dinner tray, the secret chamber door was unlocked, and the adjacent window was open. Footprints could be seen easily in the mud of the dew-drenched lawn. The prints went all the way to the nearby stream and were lost forever from there. Thomas Lyon Bowles, the, the monster of Glamis, was gone. Claude Bowes Lyon, the grandfather of the Queen Mother, who inherited the earldom in 1865, reportedly said, If you could even guess the nature of this castle's secret, you would get down on your knees and thank God it was not yours. Reports say that for a few years, the family was forced to make payoffs and bribes to keep any incidents nearby the castle quiet. And then one day, it all just stopped. It is believed that Thomas Lyon Bowles, the monster of Glamis, had died. But no one knows for sure because no body was ever found. The end. Woohoo! Stop the presses! Here. Ready. Hold it right there. Did I say the end? Now, I don't often get the chance to add to any of these stories, yet on watching the new drama on Netflix called The Crown, I was forced to rush to confirm what I had just seen. To my amazement, it was all true. And it directly adds information to the story that I just told you. Princess Margaret, after having some health issues, went to see a therapist, and it was there that she was informed that her family has was plagued with mental illness. Now, it was then she was horrified to learn about the sisters. Now, first she looked into the official record and found that the sisters were recorded as having died. But then she did some sleuthing, and her and a friend of hers who was a priest, they found the sisters. Narissa Bowes Lyon and Catherine Bowes Lyon, first cousins of Queen Elizabeth, were secretly incarcerated in the Royal Earlswood Asylum for Mental Defectives in 1941, along with other relatives of the royal family who suffered mental illness as well. Total of five of them. They were squirreled away and forgotten, yet these sisters knew exactly who they were and what, their fa what family they belonged to even in their diminished capacity. The official reason for keeping them hidden away from the public was to hide the fact that there was mental illness in the royal family, for they had already had their share of mental illness shown publicly in the past. Now, was it a cover-up, a mistake? The Queen Mother admits she knew all about Nerissa and Catherine's institutionalization, but did nothing about it so that her bloodline would seem pure. Beyond the cruel connotations of the explanation, what that essentially means is that Queen Mother was trying to prevent anyone from having a reason to dispute her husband, George VI, taking the throne after his brother, Edward VIII, abdicated. Now, the scandal uncovered after Nerissa's death in 1986 was the subject of a 2011 documentary. Sadly, though, all this could have been avoided with a simple, logical analysis of the bloodline. You see, the therapist 
that Princess Margaret went to see figured out that the mental illness was hereditary, but it was not from the uh, lion, Bose Lion family. Genetic experts determined that all five of these women potentially had a genetic disorder that caused disabilities in the female members of the bloodline on their mother's side. And since none of these people who were in the institution had had children, this mental illness is going to die out with them. It has no effect on the royal family. Yep, they hid it away. Sad. All right. Well, just thought I'd add that little bit to it for you. Hope you enjoyed it.